Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Ex Libris, which is a new worker placement set collection game, and I'm going to be doing a two-player run through it today so you can see what it's all about. Although before I go on, I strongly recommend you turn your subtitles onto the Klingon channel, so if I make any rules goofs, you'll know what they are. Okay, have you done so? Hey, then welcome to this thriving, bustling fantasy town where all the people love to read. They just love, love, love it to death. And the town council has put on a competition. All the book collectors of town are competing to become the new grand librarian. And that's what players are trying to do. They're trying to put forward the best book collection possible by playing cards and collecting sets of cards. Now, as part of setup, everybody gets either a standard library of their very own, um, which just means they'd start with three general workers, but you don't want to play that way. You want to play the cool way, where everybody gets their own specialized library. I've got the Dungeon of Deep Thought. And what that means is I'll have two little gnomish workers, like always, and a gelatinous cube as my third worker. Oh, yeah, baby. And Jen, she's got the Swamp of Scholarship, which means she's got two gnomish workers and a witch! A witch! Although, again, we could be playing just the regular game where everybody just has three regular workers. But um, each of us has a special power associated with our character. The witch, let's see, when acquiring banned books, reveal the top card. All right, so Jen can avoid banned books. That's very, very cool. And my special power with my gelatinous cube here is when an opponent visits the location where the cube is, they have to give you one random card or allow you to perform both. Oh, my. Ooh, that's very nice as well. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so we've got our special powers. Each player also starts with a randomly dealt hand of six cards, and this will form the basis of their shelf full of books. You know, my, my shelf might look a little something like this at the end of the game. Although, as you are laying these books out, this would be totally wrong because they have to be in alphabetical order. What kind of library doesn't have things alphabetized? So this would be totally wrong. Um, M and then L and then I and then W, E, Q. Obviously, I'd be building this uh, something a little bit more like uh, this, you know, um, to, to lay them out. Because at the end of the game, when we're evaluating our book collections, any card that is out of order alphabetically because you just laid something out wrong, or things didn't go your way, or you thought you were going to move it, but you didn't ran out of time or whatever, goes face down. So you lost all those books towards the total value of your book collection. So that's something you got to pay attention to. But we'll show how that works as we start actually building up our little libraries here. But for now, this is my starting hand of six cards. Jen's got her starting hand of six cards. We've each got our special power. And uh, last thing we got to do as part of setup is deal with prominent works and banned books. There are five types of literary works in this game. There's one for each of them in this deck. And so we randomly pick one. And in this town, historical volumes are the prominent works. So at the end of the game, whoever has the most yellow books on their bookshelf will score 15 points. Second place is nine. So there's a six point spread there in a two player game, which is a pretty big deal. Now we got to pick another one randomly, just this one. All right. Fantastical fiction is banned! Nobody in town, I mean, or the town council says nobody needs to be reading those fiction books. So, these are bad. For every green book you have in your collection at the end of the game, you will lose one point. And now on top of that, we each get our own specialty. I ended up getting reference texts. I want blue books. The more blue books I have at the end of the game, the better. Each, one, each blue book is worth two points to me. So I keep this over here. Because I ideally don't want anybody knowing that that's what I'm trying to collect. Because then they might uh, prevent me from getting those blue books. So anyway, I like blue books. Jen gets one. I don't know what it is, but in fact it is monster manuals. Jen wants red books. She wants monster manuals because they are worth more points to her. Okay. So, uh, if we were playing, of course, with more players, these would get dealt out. But in a two-player game, they're just gone. So that you can't be sure what it is your opponent is after. And, all right. Oh, one more thing. At the beginning of the game, you always have the Diviner's Hut as a worker placement space you can go to. But we get one additional one in a two-player game. In a two-player game, there are always going to be two of these worker placement tiles out at the beginning of a round. The Diviner's Hut is always going to be there in the first round. And we also get... The bookseller. Okay, that's a, that's a good one to start with. Some of them aren't so great. This is a good one. Now, as it says here, when this comes out, we deal four cards. So we have an N, and an I, and an I, and a Q. Okay, so 
These are additional cards that we can put in our hand, and wherever possible, because we're actually trying to lay our books out in alphabetical order, some of these cards may be more or less valuable to people. Like, for instance, I like the letter I because, hey, remember they have to be in alphabetical order. So if I put an I down, I can put another I down to it next to it and not worry about things not fitting. Uh, as an example. Although, remember, I also like blue. And, oh, this eye has two blues on it. And a yellow, which is the prominent works. And no green, which is the band book. I want this letter I. I want it bad, my precious. I need to get to the bookseller. Stat! Alrighty. But worry about that in a second. So, uh, we're set up. Everybody's got their special starting card, their special worker. I'm going to be the first player. That's what this marker is. We've got our starting hand. And we're ready to go, folks. So, uh, like I said, it's a worker placement uh, game, and at the beginning of the game, I can place a worker in any of my own spaces on my board. Everybody has the exact same three spaces on their board they can send their workers to. Or I could go to the Diviner's Hut, or since we're in a two-player game, I could go to this space or this space. This is for three-player game, this is for four-player game. So in a two-player game, it's only these are available. And like I said, I want to go there. I want this card. So I could send out one of my gnomes, but I think I'm going to send out Ye old Gelatinous Cube. Because, remember, all right, so I've come here, and this is an instant location. All the locations you can send your workers to are either instant, you do the action uh, um, immediately, or they are end of round. After all the workers are placed, they get activated. Let's see if I can find one of those. Uh, mid game. Oh, let's see. I see one. Yeah, like the auction house. This one, you put your workers out, but nothing happens immediately. After all the worker placement is done, that's when the auctioning starts happen to see who wins these three cards. So they're either immediate or they're delayed action. This is an immediate. So I come here, and my bonus, my benefit is for coming here, I immediately get to take one card from this location. You know I want that one. And if I want, I can shelve it. Normally, you have to use a worker action to shelve something, but I'm going to shelve that for free. So, I will take the, this one because it's perfect for me. I love blue. I love yellow. Uh, and per unbeknownst to me, I love purple because I don't want Jen to get those purples because she loves purples. That was her preferred color, wasn't it? Oh, no, no. She wanted, she wanted reds. That's right. All right, so Jen wants to find red books if she can. So she doesn't mind uh, because, hey, this one has red on it. Um, although it does also have a green. So while she'd get two points for this, she'd lose one point for that. So that's something to bear in mind. But anyway, so I've taken this and now, normally when you take a card, it just goes into your hand to join the other ones. But as a special thing, as a bonus, not only do I get the card I want, but I can shelve it. And I think I'll do that right now. So I have placed my first book on my big, glorious bookshelf I'm trying to build here. From now on, now that I've built this, the next card I place has to go orthogonally adjacent, you know, um, east or west or north or south of it, or up, down, left, and right of it. And uh, if I go to the right, or above, or you know, or, or below it, it has to be higher. You know, it has to be you know, J, K, J or higher. If I go a left or above, it has to be you know, less. It has to be H's or A's or B's or C's. Anyway, so I place that. This I. What is this, by the way? Um, an interesting thing. This is a huge stack of cards with a huge amount of books in there, and every one is unique. On this I card, I've got ineffective elixirs, incorrigible dirigibles, incorrect maps, and inaccurate atlases, and an incomplete guide to procrastination, <laughs> which uh, there's a lot of really cute, fun little punny names here. Now remember, I want blue, so I'm very happy to have gotten two blue because that's my special thing. Right. So anyway, so I've gotten that, but there's something else because I sent my gelatinous cube over here. Remember, there's another space. If Jen decides to right off the bat come over here and send one of her workers. If an opponent visits where the, the cube's location, they must either give a random card over or allow me to perform both of my home actions. So if Jen comes here, she I'm, I'm going to slime all over her, I guess, with my gelatinous cube, and that's going to give me a bonus action. But if Jen doesn't come over here with her witch or one of her gnomes, then I'll be able to come here a second time and get another card of my choosing. And Jen saw, I just took an eye, and there's another eye right here, so it'd be really great to be able to have two eyes next to each other. So, Jen's got a decision. Uh, you know what? Actually, I think she will send her witch. All right. So she's going to send her witch out here so she can take one of these. And now here's the interesting thing. Um, that means she could take this inside. Actually, I should look at what she's got. Um, I, I knew I wanted that eye, 
because it matched my colors, but also because I have another eye. So I'll be able to put this other eye next to the first one, and you can tell there are a total of eight eye cards in the decks. And this was card number four, this was card number six. So I feel pretty safe putting this here, because what are the chances in this ridiculously huge deck of cards that I would find um, eye card number five, which I would want to put in between them? Because once they're in place, I can't slip them around and make room for other stuff. They're locked in place, unless I've got some kind of special power. But anyway, I was happy to get this, because next I'll put this other eye next to it, and I'm really starting to build my, um, my bookshelf up. Right. So anyway, this is the rest of my hand. What is in Jen's hand? She's got a C she's got an I also. I8. So she would like I7. She's got a G, a D, an L, and a B. Alright, so that I is not bad. It's pretty good, because it would work well with hers. But remember again, green books are bad news. They are banned books. Every banned book you have is loses you a point at the end of the game. And the witch's special power is when you um, acquire a banned book which this one, this one, or this one would include banned books, you can reveal the top card of the deck and take that card instead. So Jen could send her witch out here and, fingers crossed, hope to get a better one. Um, and if she doesn't like the one, she could go with this one, because, hey, it does have red, and red is Jen's preferred color. So, hmm. And it's an I7, which will go well with her I8. So I think Jen... Now, she could just send her regular gnomes over here, but then she'd just be stuck with one of these. She wouldn't be able to draw and hope for something better. So she'll send her witch out. Although, if she's going to use her witch, it might make sense to send it to her own spaces. Because on your boards, when you send any of your workers to one of these three spaces, you make a choice. You either draw a card blind and just hope for the best and add it to your hand, or you shelf a card from your hand and put it on your shelves, like you saw me do. So, um, you know, maybe it makes more sense, because Jen knows what she's getting here. If she sends a gnome over here, she's just got to draw a blind and hope for the best. If she sends her witch, well, um, you know, if, if she draws a banned book and she doesn't want it, she can reveal the next card and hope for something better. You know what, I think that does make sense. Because, you know, there's only one banned book, and you're going to get a few banned books. There's no getting around it. And th that is a book, uh, you know, that Jen likes. So, with that, she will just send a regular guy out there and save the witch for back home. And she'll take this letter I because she knows she likes it. Although, does the N and the Q work for her at all? Hmm. Um, you know, an N isn't too far ahead of L. If she put her N down and, then, or, and she put her L to the left of it, she'd only be giving up on, you know, M. So N isn't bad, but N is even worse. It's got two banned books on it. She doesn't want that one. Although, it also has two yellows. Ooh. And remember, there's a six-point spread. Fifteen points, whoever has the most yellows. So that thing would lose you two points, but it could win you the six points. Hmm. No, I think Jen likes... She wants to go for the one that it fits her specialty. Plus, this one has a nice variety. There are a lot of things you score for at the end of the game. You know, having the most prominent works. Uh, you lose points for banned books. You also get categorical variety. You want to get as many full sets, minus whatever is banned, as possible uh, on your shelf, because um, that will lead to huge points. Um, yeah, each player earns three points for every book in their bookshelf for the category that they have the least of. So if you can really diversify and get a lot of everything, you can score 9, 12 points, even more, depending on how well you... And this is nice, because it's got a a lot of variety in it. Now, there's also the library focus. That's the secret card we have. And there is your shelf stability. We're trying to build our shelves so that at the end of the game, we've got a nice big solid block. Um, it has to be at least two by two with um, you know two of them touching the ground. And basically, everything in that block is going to be worth points as well. Every card will be worth a point. So, going for shelf stability is a big deal. Going for the prominent works, avoiding the banned works, getting variety, trying to get a little bit of everything, um, hitting your focus, and also make sure you put everything in alphabetical order, because if you don't, you'll lose cards for doing it. So, I think Jen likes this anyway. So, she came over here with a gnome, and because you know, if she hadn't, boom, I would have taken the other space with one of my gnomes, because this was too good to pass up. But here's the th all right, and, and Jen could either take this into her hand, or as a bonus, she could shelve it. She's going to shelve it. So both Jen and I have started our bookshelves now. Um, we both started at letter I. We can go to the left or the right. Um, we can consider this to be the top, the bottom, or the middle row. We'll see how things build up over time.
All right. Um, so Jen has shelved it. But now remember, because Jen visited my cube, Jen now has to either randomly make me lose a card or let me do both of my home actions, which is I will get to draw a card and then immediately shelve one. Either that or Jen has to give me one randomly. Jen does not want to give up her letter I randomly right next to hers. So I think she'll just say, OK, your cube can just go on ahead and two to do regulars. So that means I draw one blind, and I got a Y. And now I can shelf one. I mean, so this is two actions I got because of my cube with no, um, you know, without having to use workers, because Jen followed me. So you can see why going first when you have the cube would be a big deal. You want to get your cube out to a place that everybody wants to go to. If you were playing with more players, the cube would get to activate several times. But anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and put my other eye into place. So I've locked this in, uh, you know, I4, and I hope I never see I5 because I'll be really bummed that I can't slip it in between them. All right, and I got a Y, um, which, hey, has another yellow, it has a yellow and it has a green. Um, and it has a red. I don't particularly care about that. But hey, you know what? I, why? I know if I put that to the far right of something, chances are I'm not going to find any Zs or anything like that. So I know this could be in the far bottom right corner as I'm doing my planning as we go. But anyway, so that was Jen's turn. A lot of stuff happened. Now it's my turn. So uh, again, we can't go to this or this because that's for three or four players. I could come over here to the Diviner's Hut, which would let me draw a card and add it to my, uh, or no, actually, it would let me draw a card for every assistant I've uh, got on the board. So if I do it right now, I'd get to draw two cards and I would hold on to first player. Going to the Diviner's Hut is the way you get first player. But if you wait and not do it immediately, you'll get a bonus of extra cards to draw. So I could do it right now and I'd get to draw two cards. Yeah, let's go ahead and do it. I'll do it. I'll draw two cards because I placed two assistants. One, two, and uh, it's an A and an M. And I'm going to hold on to first player. Jen cannot take it from me. Um, oh, wait, oh, wait, oh, wait. That's not true, right? There was something about that. Um, right, I got to look in the rule book for the Dire Hut. Draw, draw one card for every assistant you played, including this one. Next, take the first player. Draw one currently has it. If you are, no, yeah, okay, no, that is right. Oh, that's right. Oh, is the ghost cannot ever go to the Divine's Hut. That's what it was. So, um, right, there we go. I held on to this. I got an extra card, I've, and I'll be first next turn. So next round, I'll be able to use my cube to good effect again. So that was my second turn. I drew a couple of cards. What did I get? I got an M and an A. Jen's turn. She can't come here. She can't come here. So she's going to go to her own backyard. Well, she'll use her witch now, which means she'll draw. Well, no, she could either shelf or she could draw when you use your own space. Jen will draw because she's using the witch. So if this has a banned book on it, she could say, to heck with that, let's draw again. And it does. Um, it does. This would be negative two points. Although it uh, has red, so this would be a, a break even for her. Jen would get two points for this, but lose two points. That, Jen's not excited about that. She will use the witch's power to draw another one, and let's see if this one's better. OK, um, it's an X. So this one ha is neither plus nor minus, but an X is nice. Well, a W is nice too. Hmm. Let's see here. And so what Jen needs to think about is, remember, you want to get a, as much variety as possible. This only has two, and both of these have a black, and it breaks even. So I guess Jen will go with the W and forget about the X that she used her push power to. Right, so she drew that. She didn't shelve it, she drew it. Because when you uh, go to your own spaces, you either draw or shelve. My turn, I've got one more. I'm going to come to my own. I could either shelve or draw something. Um, let's see, what do I want to do? Do I want to... Uh, I J K L. I could put this L in, but I mean, I'd be then I'd be l throwing away um, J's and K's. I don't think I want. I'm just going to draw one and let's see what I get. I get the letter M. Okay, which uh, has the prominent work, but also the banned book. All right, that was my turn. Jen's last turn. She could shelf or she could draw. Now she's got a good one to shelf. Um, I7 and I8, that would make perfect sense. There's no reason not to do it. But she can always do that later. I think she's just going to draw another card. And she got a W. Ooh, yes. So she is glad she kept that W because now these two Ws, uh, W number three and W number four, will sit together quite nicely on her shelf. So that was it. We have finished the first round. I've got two books placed. Jen's got one. Now at the end of the round, we recover all our workers or our assistants, they're called. And then, all right, so and nobody took these cards, so they're gone. 
And at the end of the round, we look at all of the uh, cards, all the locations. The town locations are already out. The one that has the lowest value, this is number one, this is number 10, comes over here and becomes a permanent location. The Diviner's Hut will be in this game for the rest of the game. The bookseller, it was not the lowest value, so it gets removed from the game. This was our only chance to ever visit the bookseller. And now, going into the next round, we draw two more randomly, and we've got the local draft house, which is number 12. And we've got the Mystery Shack, which is number 13. And it says, deal four cards face down. It's very mysterious at the Mystery Shack. So we have no idea what's there. All right, two worker placement spots here, because this is for three players, and two worker placement spots here for three and four. And now what do these do? Because, you know, over the course of this game, this town evolves drastically. Every round, you're always going to be getting new opportunities. And one of those opportunities, in this case, going into the third round, the local draft house, because it was 12 versus 13, it'll stick around, and this will be in here for the rest of the game, and the Mystery Shack will be a one-time only. All righty. So anyway, what do these do? Well, as you can read right there, uh, the player on space one uh, below reveals two cards from the deck for every assistant at this location. Uh, all right. Oh, because yes, this is one of those ones. We put all our workers out, and after the round is over, then we resolve this. Uh, whoever's on space one reveals two cards from the deck for every assistant at this location. Um, and in the order below, each player takes one card until none remains. Right, so you want to get in here first because we're going to draft two cards if two players come here. Now, if I go here and I go here again, I'll get both of those cards. But uh, and meanwhile, over here at the Mystery Shack, what's going on? Okay, so name a category. You know, there's the five categories. Then peek at all of the mystery cards, reveal and take all cards matching that category, return the remaining cards face down, um, and you may shelve one of the cards. So obviously, we want to get a lot of... So I think whoever comes here, the first player will say, I want to find yellows. You'll look through here and get the card that has the most yellows, and then the rest will be back. Um, wow, okay, that's pretty cool. And so, we're ready to go again. I held on to first player, and you better believe I'm going to put my cube out. Because wherever I put my cube out means Jen will have to think twice about going there because she'll give me a big bonus. This draft, I mean, this mystery shack is cool. You could get a lot or you could get nothing, um, but you'll probably get at least one card. The local draft house, you'll get a card, and since I'm here first, I'll draw um, the two cards. Oh, no, it's, oh, it's, uh, it's four cards, because if, if there are two assistants here, it's two for every, and in order, each player takes one card until none remains. So I'm going to get two cards, and I'll get first dibs on them. Now, now, I don't resolve this immediately, so that's that, and now Jen's got to decide and she's, oh, that cube again. If she comes here, that's going to be huge for me. Um, I will get, uh, I will either steal one of Jen's cards, although it's random, and Jen's got a bunch of cards, or I'll get to draw a card and shelve a card. But Jen, I mean, so maybe Jen could come over here to the mystery shack, and then that means, oh, well, hey, I left the draft house all to myself, in which case Jen says, okay, well, I got the mystery shack all to myself. Mister, and then um, what? I'd probably either hold on to first player, or um, you know, or do one of my own actions. Hmm, is that how is this going to play out? Okay, Jen does not want to give me two bonus actions again, and she she's got plenty of cards that she wouldn't mind losing, but she's got some she does she has two W's and two I's. She doesn't want to take a chance of losing any of those. So I think she says. Hmm. Um, she'll just send one of her little guys over to the mystery shack. And now it's my... Oh, and immediately, immediately names a category. So she got here first. She says, yellow, I want historical volumes. And now she will get to take a look at these and nobody else. So Jen's hoping to see some yellows. Uh, let's see what we got. Yellow. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. She got one card. Is that right? Uh, reveal and take any and all cards matching that category. She got one. Although it's an I. And of all the cards she took, she can immediately shelve one. So she'll take that. She'll shelve it here. Boom! Um, for free. And so Jen's caught up with me. Uh, she's got number I number five and I number seven. It's funny. We both are starting out with the letter I. Anyway, so the rest of these go back. All the before they go back. Jen's got to memorize this. Memorize this. Because if she gets the second one, she knows, okay, don't pick green. She wouldn't anyway. She knows to pick purple because she'd get this card and, and it's, a, it's a J. She would immediately get to shelve it after her eyes. That makes perfect sense. 
And she doesn't want, if she chose blue, she'd get stuck with a bunch of green that she doesn't want. So Jen knows if she gets a second shot at this, she chooses the purple. So anyway, so these all go back face down. And now it's my turn again. And now uh, this is an interesting decision. If I come here, I've, I own this draft house. I get all four cards. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. How can I say no to that? So I will do that. And boom. Now Jen can't get in at all. But that means Jen will come over here and she'll say, purple, please. And she does. And she already knows she found that. And she can immediately shelve it. All righty. And now it's my turn again. I've got one more worker. Where am I going to go? I can go... Uh, I can't go to the local draft house anymore. And also, since Jen didn't follow me, I did not get to use my uh, special ability of my... So, do I just shelve or draw a card? Or do I come up here and draw three cards? Jen left it for me because she really wanted that mystery shack. So yeah, baby, I'll draw one, two, three cards. Uno, dos, trace. And I'll hold on to first player. All these go into my big fat hand. And now Jen, she's got one more. It's the witch. Can't go anywhere here. We'll come over here. Draw. Jen can draw or she can shelve. She's already done shelving. She'll draw. And remember, her witch says if she gets any green, she can draw again. And ooh, that's not good. Well, negative two points plus two points. It breaks even. But let's see. Because it's banned, Jen can draw again to see something better. That's much nicer because Jen likes red. So she'll take this one. And in doing that, she kind of clues me in that chances... Well, I know she doesn't want blue, and I know she doesn't want yellow or green. So chances are, I now know she wants purple or red because she took this one. Or, well, I could guess that anyway. And, oh, it's an M. Uh, right, no, Jen took it. She can't shelve it. It just goes into her hand. This other one gets discarded. And, um, right. So we're done with the second round. Easy peasy. I hold on to first player. And, all right, so the rest of the Mystery Shack is done. Number 13, the Mystery Shack goes away. The local draft house will continue to stick around. And you saw how awesome that was for me to go there with my cube and be the first player. Jen has to take first player from me. But in the meantime, we're moving on to round three. Two more come out. Hey, it is the auction house, which is number three. So chances are it's going to stick around for the rest of the game. And the rummage sale. Now, this needs three cards face up so we can see what they are that are going to go up for sale in the auction. And we have a rummage sale over here where we also have three cards. Bippity, boppity, and boo. Let's see. And the special power of the rummage sale. Oh, focus camera. All righty. Um, take one card from this location. Take one additional card if another assistant is present. All newly acquired cards may be shelved. So that's cool. You don't want to be the first one here. You want to be the second player here. The first player just gets one. The second player gets everything that's left. Ooh. So um, that makes it very attractive. For, if I go here for my cube, Jen's very much going to want to go there so she can get two cards, but then she'll um, trigger my cube effect again. The auction house is a bit different. And you can see, no matter how, there's always four slots. We could send four of our combined six workers here. And the, basically, the way this works is, you know, during resolution, the highest bidder... All right, oh, yeah. When placing, choose a bid space. So these are what you're bidding. Um, return outbid assistance uh, to the player. So... That's the interesting thing. Uh, if if uh, you know, I come over here with the one. Oh my gosh! If is this true? Yeah. If I come over here with my cube, I'm trying. Uh, you know, basically the high bidder gets all three of these cards, and they have to pay. I would have to pay one. I'd have to discard one of the cards from my hand to get all three of these. Three for one. That's a great trade. And I'm only bidding one. Now, if Jen wants, she can outbid me, and that will kick me out. And now Jen's bidding two to get these three, but. She just gave me my cube back and triggered the cube power. Oh my goodness gracious. Wow. So that cube is definitely going to town. All righty. Um, let's see. So, I mean, in general, either let me, or she'd give me a card to. So these are both, oops, great places for me to send my cube here because Jen will definitely want to do it here because Jen will want to outbid me. But hey, don't forget, the local draft house is still here too. And there were four cards to be had there. You know what? I don't think I got my four cards, did I? Did I? I don't remember if I did or not. 
Well, if I didn't, I'm sure Paulo made a note of it. I probably did. I probably... No, I didn't. I got four cards out of that because it didn't happen immediately. It happened at the end of the round. So here's the four cards I got. So I'm getting a huge hand. Now, I don't know. It's not, it's not likely that I'm going to get every one of these cards into play before the game is out. But remember, hey, I could use some of these cards to bid for cards that I want more because the in this game, the auction house is number three. Rummage sales number 14. That means auction house is going to stay. Going into the next round, we'll have two more tiles, plus the Diviner's Hut, plus the local draft house, plus the auction house. It's going to get crazy. Um, and all of these are working really, really well, which is why wherever I go, it probably makes sense for Jen to say, you are done being first player. Which means, although, you see, it's, it's terrible to do this right away because then Jen only has one, so she only gets to draw one card. She'd like to do it later after she's placed some stuff. But then I might hold on to it and continue my reign of gelatinous terror. Who? what to do, what to do. Well, you know what, folks? I think I'm going to stop right there, because that should give you a pretty good idea of what Ex Libris is all about. Now, if you want to hear some final thoughts, you can hit that eye in the top right corner screen or follow the show notes in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.